so i have already taught you that what is the requirement of ether channel and how can we configure it and how does it really perform load balancing right and uh, i was talking about the ether channel load balancing first right so i said that if you talk about the load balancing algorithm hash algorithm actually load balancing hash algorithm I'm not gonna to perform here. I'm not gonna to convert your MAC addresses into binary, and then I'm, I'm not gonna to perform that hash operation here, right? What will I do? I will simply tell you that if you have bundled like four links, for an example, or I mean, like generally, it is recommended to bundle either two links, or four links, or eight links. Fine. Okay. So if you are having two links then traffic will get distributed in ratio of 4 is to 4 or you can say 1 is to 1 or you can say 1 is to 1 something like this <coughs> fine i mean 50 50 or you can also say like 50 percent in this way if you are having two links right but if you are having three links then your tra I mean your traffic will get distributed in ratio of 50 percent colon 25 percent colon 25 percent what three links i got your point and if you are using four links then your traffic will get distributed in this way now 25 colon 25 percent colon 25 <coughs> colon 25 percent right if you are having five links then your traffic will get distributed in this way now tell me 50 how Twenty percent. Twenty percent. What? It will get distributed in this way now, as you must remember that two is to two is to one. 1 is to 1 is to 1. Oh, yeah. Still, it, here it will be 2. In this ratio, traffic will get distributed. So now you can also calculate their percentile. In this ratio only. And then if you are having six, six links, then 2 is 2, 2 is to 1, 2. If you are having seven links, then your traffic will get distributed in ratio of if you are having eight links Now please close the door. Fine. So in this ratio actually your traffic will get distributed. So here I am not going to perform that I mean binary operation and all and all. I will, I will not perform that.
राइट सो इफ यू हैव फाइव लिंक्स इफ यू हैव एग्रीगेटेड फाइव लिंक्स टुगेदर एंड इफ यू आर हैविंग एट डिफरेंट सोर्स मैक एड्रेसिस बिकॉज बाई डिफॉल्ट योर लोड बैलेंसिंग एल्गोरिदम इज सोर्स मैक एड्रेस so if you are having eight different sources and if you have aggregated five links in that case <coughs> traffic from two users from two different mac addresses will go via link 1 <coughs> then traffic from two users will go via link 2 traffic from next two users will go via link 3 then traffic from one user from one mac address will go via link 4 and traffic from one user one mac address will go via link 5 so in this way your traffic your data will get distributed fine <coughs> this is the only way to understand the load balancing hash algorithm in ether channel so it is it is it's not like that if you have aggregated three links or five links six links or five, <coughs> i mean or seven links that then ether channel will not be able to perform load balancing it will but it will not be possible for ether channel to uh, to perform appropriate <coughs> load balancing I mean equal cost load balancing something. I mean something like that. If you are having two links or four links or eight links, in that case you can see that Ether channel is performing equal load balancing, right? But if you are using, I mean if you are aggregating like three links, five links, six links or seven links, in that case Ether channel will perform unequal. Mm -hmm. load <coughs> balancing have you understood it now so in this way actually your ether channel performs load balancing now i have already told you that test command right so with using that test command you can easily verify that which port which which physical port of port channel will be elected to transmit your frame or packet now it will be depending on your selected load balancing algorithm actually like whether you have selected uh, the source mac address or destination mac address or the combination of source and destination mac address or source uh, ip address or destination ip address or the combination of source and destination ip address and re remember that cisco recommends to use the combination of source and destination ip address right so it will be default ether channel load balancing i mean it should be Default Ether Channel Load Balancing Algorithm on your switches, on your Cisco switches. I hope now you have understood this load balancing. So from three seven five zero, it will support that. Uh, of course, all these things. Three seven five zero will support for six, whereas forty five hundred and sixty five hundred series of switches can also support all nine load balancing algorithms. Right. So I hope that till now you have understood all these things. Have you? Yes. this ratio so basically remember that ether channel will always be responsible to perform load balancing in this ratio only <coughs> right now this is all about the ether channel load balancing now it doesn't matter i mean uh, if you are configuring your ether channel with using either mode on or pacp or lcp doesn't matter actually ether channel load balancing algorithms will always work uh, in same manner whether you have configured your ether channel with using on mode on or pacp or lcp doesn't matter actually ether channel load balancing hash algorithm will always remain same fine so now we are going to configure this ether channel once again and uh, first of all i will tell you that how to use mode on and then i'll go for pacp and then i'll go for LACP. But before going for practicals, let's discuss some differences in between PACP and LACP. I think in previous class also I discussed some differences in between them. Like PACP is a is a Cisco proprietary port aggregation protocol, right? Second thing that you must remember in PACP that you can aggregate maximum eight links, and statically also you can aggregate maximum. eight links like with using mode on but uh, this lcp which is uh, open standard protocol with using lcp you can aggregate up to 16 links but the thing is again 
again maximum eight links can participate in your ether channel actively and all other links will remain okay. in, in standby state is not it so i hope that you understand all these things all these differences in between phep and lscp now after uh, going through it let me tell you or let me ask you one question related to lscp for an example this is switch one you understand and let's say this is switch two now these are the links available in between switch one and switch two <coughs> how many links are there nine let's say ten links are there one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten you have aggregated all of them together in a single port channel one with using LACP. Now, how will it be possible for LACP to elect all those eight links which will be responsible to uh, to participate in your Ether channel actively? Are you getting my, my question here? Yes. That how will it be possible or how LACP is gonna to elect all those eight links which will be responsible to participate in your Ether channel actively? Have you understood my question? Yes. So what's that? Uh, I mean uh, feature of LACP so that it can easily elect all those eight links. First of all, it will elect the main switch. LACP, LACP. If you talk about the LACP, LACP have one terminology actually, which is known as LACP <laughs> port ID. Is not it? Yes. LACP <coughs> port ID. So if you talk about the LACP port ID, this port ID contains two components now. One is priority and another one is interface ID. Is not it? Interface ID. Interface ID like 0 by 1 or 0 by 2 or 0 by 3, something like that, right? If we talk about the priority, then by default it is 3, 2, 7, 6, 8. If we talk about the interface ID, of course it will be depending on your device like uh, might be you have interconnected uh, your switches with using 0 by 1 0 by 2 or 0 by 3 or 0 by 3 or 0 by 4 it will be depending on your connections right so interface ID you cannot change it right but you can modify your priority fine but by default it is also 3 2 7 6 8 for each interface right now remember that whenever LACP will elect whenever LACP will elect its active links active ports i mean whenever lacp is gonna to elect all those interfaces all those links which will be responsible to participate in ether channel actively in that case it will compare their lacp port id and inside lacp port id again it will it will become it will compare lacp priority first it will compare priority first if priority is same then it will go for interface ID right and by default you know very well that because I said that by default their priority is 3 to 7 6 8 then definitely it will compare their interface IDs I mean interface numbers right so first eight first eight will be elected or, or you can say first eight links will be responsible to participate in your ether channel actively I hope that you have understood it now have you guys understood this concept the uses of lacp port id <coughs> contains two components here port pri uh, priority and second one is interface id priority is what three by default it is three two seven six eight but remember lower will always be preferred so in case if in question let's say in question they have asked you that aggregate all these 10 links but make sure that this port number 10 must participate actively in your ether channel then what will you do here you will configure its priority lower than other links is not it so that first of all LACP will pick this <coughs> link number 10 <coughs> or port number 10 right so this port number 10 will always participate in your ether channel actively is not it okay so for that purpose you can modify their priorities okay then after I'm also having one other another problem here let's say it is not always mandatory to use same interfaces on both ends is not it let's say on switch 2 you have you are using like in this way 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 in this way 
now switch one will conflict with switch two because according to the switch one first it must participate in your ether channel actively according to switch two last sorry yeah last eight is not it must participate in your ether channel actively how will it be possible actually hmm? in, in that case first of all they will compare their LACP system ID and again LACP system ID contains two things it have two components one is priority and which is again 3 to 6 a and then system MAC address so we can say base MAC address right system MAC address so LACP system ID contains these two components system priority and system MAC address so in case if switches are conflicting right to elect their active ports in that case first of all now they will compare their system IDs a switch with having lower system ID are you getting a point a switch which is having lower system ID will be responsible to elect your active ports in this case right so of course either switch one or switch two will be having best system ID let's say switch one is having best system ID let's say its MAC address was a and the MAC address of uh, the switch two was B so in that case because switch one is having lower system ID lower LACP system ID so switch one will be responsible to elect your active port so if switch one says that first eight it means switch two has to negotiate with switch one now right switch two has to negotiate with switch one so first eight will be responsible to participate in your ether channel actively have you understood it now so in case if switches are conflicting if switches are conflicting in election of active ports right in that case first of all they will compare their lacp system id a switch with having lower lacp system id will be responsible to elect active ports for your ether channel is not it so in this way lacp works actually and uh, rest of the things i will discuss uh, during practicals only that's enough for us to understand right now you can also you could ask me that how will it be possible for switch one to get the information of switch two or how will it be possible for switch two to get the information of switch one so for that i mean uh, for this task actually remember that lacp will also be responsible to generate bpdu which are known as lacp bpdu like you heard about bpdus during stp before now right but remember that lacp also have bpdu so lacp will will start to generate bpdu so that now switches can access their information with each other easily and then finally they can make they can they can make a decision right uh, that which links will be responsible to participate in your ether channel actively have you understood it now <coughs> have you understood the procedure performed by lacp to elect its active ports sure and again the load balancing algorithm load balancing hash algorithm will remain same okay now if you talk about the PAGP again let's say this is PAGP right so if you talk about the PAGP port aggregation protocol uh, in PAGP generally two, you have two modes right one is auto desirable. another one is desirable, desirable. but under desirable and auto you are also having some keywords like silent or non-silent by default it works in silent mode right i mean when we configure php mode either auto or desirable desirable then we can also configure this silent mode right as well as non-silent mode so my question is to you that what is the difference in between silent mode and non-silent mode in php Okay. Silent mode will never check the bidirectional connectivity. Mm -hmm. And the non silent will check the bidirectional connectivity. Duplex. 
not duplex actually it's not duplex okay uh, is there anyone else who can differentiate differences in between silent mode and non silent mode <coughs> in books in most of the cases in books you will find that yeah then you will always configure silent mode right <coughs> and if uh, on far end you are having PAGP capable device PAGP capable device then you, you should configure non silent mode but it is not true actually it's not true like what can you do at one end you can configure mode on and on another end you can configure PAGP in silent mode but still you will see that PAGP won't be able PAGP won't be able to form ether channel otherwise to it should have form ether channel right it should have uh, uh, form I mean it should have created port channel but remember that it does not work like that the main difference between silent mode and non silent mode is only like if you are configuring PAGP in silent mode then it will it will configure your ether channel and your port channel will come up the line protocol of port channel will come up without confirming bi-directional connectivity nowadays we can con we can we can achieve this task by using udld as well do you remember the work performed by udld unidirectional link detection right sometimes what happens that you will be aggregating your fiber optical ports is not it you will be aggregating fiber optical ports so let's say that you are having fiber connections fiber optical uh, ports in between two switches and you have aggregated them right so if you are going to configure PAGP in silent mode then PAGP can configure ether channel and your port channel will come up without confirming bi-directional connectivity of any interface right it will not confirm the bi-directional connect bi-directional uh, uh, I mean like you know very well that by default if we are talking about the full duplex it means it is a bi-directional however in half duplex also it is bi-directional are you, getting my, uh, are you getting a point bi-directional means you can transmit data and also you can receive data this is the meaning by bi-directional so it's not like duplex and all but i'm i'm trying to say that in case of fiber optical one wire will be for tx another will be for rx is not it so if there is any problem in any single cable like either in rx or tx then if you are running PAGP in silent mode then PAGP in PAGP silent mode that interface can also become the part but can also become the member of the port channel can also become the member of port, port channel. channel are you getting a point let's say for an example this is switch right switch one and this is switch two <coughs> let's say this is one fiber optical connection this is rx and this is what dx here it will be tx and here it will be this is one interface right and this is another interface available in between these two switches this is let's say rx so in this uh, i mean at this side it will be tx and here let's say it is rx and here definitely it will be tx so we are having these two links available in between these two switches now you want to aggregate them now right so if you are aggregating them together with using pagp then what will happen that PAGP will always by default PAGP will be configured in silent mode only right so if you are configuring PAGP in silent mode in that case what will happen that PAGP will bundle these two links together will form port channel and port channel will come up and both of them will become member of port channel however this switch 2 will not confirm will not test by directional connectivity on each interface I mean on any interface it will not check bi-directional it will not verify bi-directional communication so in case of PAGP silent mode PAGP will make your link will make your physical port member of port channel without confirming bi-directional connectivity bi-directional communication are you getting a point but in case if you are using PAGP non silent mode PAGP non-silent mode in that case always remember that PAGP will never make any interface any physical interface member of the port channel without <laughs> without confirming bi-directional communication are you getting a point so without verifying <coughs> without verifying bi-directional communication PAGP non-silent mode will never make your physical port member of any port channel so this is the major difference in between PAGP silent mode and 
non silent mode have you understood it now fine this is for interview purpose only however uh, and one more thing that whenever you will go for configuring PHP non silent mode remember that your PHP mode must be configured as desirable with the desirable only non silent mode will work so if you want to implement non I mean uh, non silent mode in that case on both ends you have to configure PHP in desirable mode fine okay so that's all about the PHP and uh, okay let's start for i mean let's start doing configuration of ether channel now I'm accessing only switch 1 and switch 2, right? I will not access switch 3 and switch 4. I can configure all types of uh, ether channel here in between these two switches only. So, This is switch 1, this is switch 2, let me show you, on switch 1, uh, interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 19 to 20 and then fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 23 to 24, shut down that. show cdp neighbors now switch one is connected with switch two only and on switch two you can see switch two is connected <coughs> sorry with switch one only all right <coughs> show interface is trunk no trunk port so let's do one thing interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 20 this port more dynamic desirable so now you will see trunking will come up dynamically right so interface is trunk no problem at all everything is fine here and then after you can also see show spanning tree and you can see 21 and 22 are participating in spanning tree separately right i mean we can see these two links here individually and then after configuring after configuring here <coughs> ether channel you will see that for stp there will be only one port, port and it will be port channel let me show you now interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 so what should i use here lacp php or mod on i think in previous class we have already configured mod on right so today we are going i mean i'm going to configure now PHP fine so to configure PHP here in between switch 1 and switch 2 what will we configure I will say channel group and it will be depending on the maximum number of available numbers right so of course we can take any number in between 1 to 40 48 and these numbers have local significance right it is not mandatory to configure same number on both switches fine so let's say that I have taken here 12 and then i will define mode and uh, because here i wanted to configure php so for php we are having only two modes either auto or desirable so let me configure desirable and then after you are also having this non-silent keyword so if you want to configure your php non-silent mode then you have to configure this command right non-silent but remember that non-silent keyword can work with desirable however you can also call it with auto with auto mode as well but it, it is always recommended to configure uh, this non silent mode this non silent feature with the desirable mode only right one more thing 
by default if you do not call this non silent because here you do not have the option of silent right do you have i mean we do not have here option of silent mode but remember that uh, here because uh, uh, like uh, by default it is silent that is why we do not have any option something related to silent because by default it will be silent but if you want to configure it in non silent mode then of course you can call here this non silent fine and uh, after configuring it here i didn't shut down it however it is also recommended that you should shut down your interfaces before configuring either channel right but here i have i have not shut down i mean i have not shut down them right now let me show you show interf show ether channel <coughs> this is the group number this is group state means we have configured actually layer 2 ether channel because we aggregated layer 2 ports we aggregated switch ports that's why by default layer 2 ether channel will come up got it and then after show ether channel you can see summary and here you can see that still it is in i i means here stand alone it means it is not working i mean it have not aggregated these two links yet <coughs> fine then what can we do we can move on switch 2 and on switch 2 interface raise fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and then we can say channel group we can hit we can take 21 as well here it is not mandatory to use the same number on both switches right so this time i took 21 and then mode here you cannot configure lcp if you configure LACP, let's say for an example, you said active. Because if you are going to configure LACP, then you have to use the combination of active and That's passive. Right. Fine. So let's say that I have configured here active. So what will it show me now? nothing ports have gone down actually just mm -hmm. finding tree 21 22 are not participating now show interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 check it out it is showing me that line okay. protocol is down actually <coughs> see don't bundle PAGP switch it have came to know that neighbor switch is running tell me PAGP and we are running here LECP so it will not bundle them right show ether channel let me show you show ether channel summary stand alone have you got it hello yes. so interface raise fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 channel group one more thing let me remove that port channel as well no interface port channel 21 and then once again move inside this range of 21 and 22 and then again configure channel group 21 mod desirable and then you can say and this time you will see that your ports will come up and also it will configure your port channel and you can see now that port channel 21 have been configured see <coughs> and also its line protocol have came up now fine so this time you can see show ether channel and then show ether channel summary p means bundled in port channel s u s s means layer 2 u means in use fine so this time your ether channel has been configured successfully and then after you can also move back on switch one as well show ether channel summary you can also see here previously it was showing me i i means it was standby right but this time PAGP have aggregated these two links together right one more thing let me show you i show ether channel detail here it will show you that it is configured in desirable non-silent non -silent. 
डिजायरेबल नॉन साइलेंट एंड बाय डिफॉल्ट योर इथर चैनल लोड बैलेंसिंग एल्गोरिदम इज शो इथर चैनल लोड बैलेंस टेक इट आउट इट इज बाय डिफॉल्ट सोर्स मैक एड्रेस सो इन प्रीवियस क्लास आई टोल्ड यू दैट हाउ कैन यू टेस्ट योर एग्जिट इंटरफेसेस राइट सो नाउ इफ यू वांट्स टू चेंज इट्स लोड बैलेंसिंग एल्गोरिदम देन द कमांड वुड बी पोर्ट चैनल लोड बैलेंस एंड देन क्वेश्चन मार्क it will listed all available all possible load balancing algorithm supported by this platform so this time you can see that we can use either source mac or destination mac or the combination of source and destination mac or source ip or destination ip or the combination of source and destination ip so cisco recommends to use source destination ip <coughs> and one more thing it is not mandatory to use the same to use common load balancing algorithm on both switches it's not mandatory like for an example this time on switch one i'm using source and destination ip now see show ether channel load balance is what source destination ip but if you move on switch to show ether channel load balance still it will show you only source mac address so it is also not mandatory to use same load balancing algorithm but actually you should use same load balancing algorithm is not it so this time on switch one you can try to identify that if you are having one source ip address and destination ip address then which port would be selected as an as an exit interface. interface fine so to identify that what can you do test ether channel load balance interface port channel is what 12 and then fast sorry so then ip and then source ip address let's say source ip address is 10.1.1.1 and destination ip is like 201.1.50 you understand so if it is something like that then it will go via tell me 22 and if your destination is 51 then it will go via 21 Then if it is 52, then 22, 53, 21 is not it. 54, 21, something like that is not it. So because I took, I bundled, I mean I aggregated only two links. So it is performing load balancing in ratio of 50-50. Yeah. Have you understood it now? So in this way you can test this load balancing algorithm. and if you configure same command on switch 2 then what uh, what will it show us actually that test ether ether channel load balance interface port channel is 21 and then uh, here ip and uh, source ip address let's say this time 201.50.50.50 and destination ip address is 10.1.1 so what is it saying so it is showing you that of course your lo configured load balancing algorithm is what source mac address cannot select member of port channel 22 21 based on ip address so first of all i mean before testing your exit interface you must uh, you must uh, have information about your ether channel load balancing right. algorithm and accordingly you will test it right so if you are using mac address only then you have to take i mean to test your load balancing you have to use only and only mac addresses if you are using ip addresses to perform load balancing then to test your load balancing you will be using ip addresses fine so it will be depending on conditions on your configuration actually so if you want to if you are use here ip address i mean the combination of source and destination ip address then again you have to say ether channel sorry port channel load balance and then you can say source destination ip and then after if you configure this command you see it will show you that okay 21 will be your exit interface <coughs> fine so in this way you can test all these things and in this way you can configure pagp and then after we can also go for lacp so if you want to know that how to configure lacp it is really simple as you learned during ccnp as well like uh, what can we do default interface Range fast Ethernet one by zero by twenty one to twenty two, right? And uh, then after configuring no, these interfaces no. in their default state, I will say no interface because port channel will still be there. That is why if you say show Ether channel, it will show you that it is there. Even if you say show IP interface brief, however, its line protocol will be down, but still this uh, virtual interface will will remain there, right? And if you see show interface port channel. 
12 then it will show you that there is no member there is no member port member interface is there of course no because we have removed all of them from this port channel now right that is why its line protocol is now down so to remove to remove it you have to say no interface port channel is what 12 in same manner i will move on switch to and then i will say default interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and uh, then after i'll say no interface port channel is what and then interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 i have to say switch port more dynamic disable so that they can, at least they can form trunking right so now you will see that trunking will come up in between these two switches show interfaces trunk right and again i would like to configure here ether channel with using lscp LSC. right so interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and then after you can say channel group 12 or you can you can take any number like you one. took this time one mod is what active. active remember that if you are using lacp i mean if you are going to configure lacp in lacp you have two modes to configure one is active another one is passive on both ends i mean if you are going to configure lacp between two switches then you must configure uh active at least on one end right one end must be configured in active state right in active mode if you have configured mode passive on both ends then definitely your ether channel will never come up right however you can configure your mode active on both ends there will not be any problem but it will be depending on question like for an you I, I i think you understand it that what are the differences between active and passive like in, in if you configure lcp in mode active it means that it will always initiate it will always initialize your ether channel negotiation right but if you configure ether i mean this lcp in passive state it will never initialize your ether channel negotiation but if it receives any negotiation message then definitely it will respond back right is not it it will perform it can perform negotiation but it will never initialize your ether channel negotiation so this is the this is the difference in between active and That's passive right. now second thing <coughs> If you configure both ends with mode active then again there will not be any problem right like for an example as you configured here channel group mode one active here on switch one in same manner you can move on switch two and then you can configure like interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and again i will say channel group one mode is what you can take passive as well right so in exam if they say if they say like switch one must be responsible to initiate your ether channel negotiation and switch to must, must not initiate your ether channel negotiation negotiation then, then you have to understand it that on switch one you have to configure lcp active, mod active, active and on switch two you have to passive, configure passive. passive so let's move back again on switch one say show ether channel and here again you can see that group state is what l2 it means this is layer to ether channel right you have ag aggregated two ports here but maximum ports that can be aggregated here is 16 right and protocol is running lacp and show ether channel somebody you can see here that this time we are using here lacp and uh, now w w means waiting to be aggregated right don't worry it will come up so interface is run something went wrong okay so this time you can see that lcp have bundled these two physical links right and uh, port channel have also came up you see so ip interface brief here and uh, port channel is there right and uh, show interface port channel is one and you can see that port members are 21 and members in this channel are 21 and 22 right and the second thing is like uh, show Spanning tree, you will see that only port channel is there. Now those physical links will never appear here in the output of the spanning tree as well, right? And show interface trunk. If you say this come, I mean if you configure this command, then also it will show you only and only port channel instead of showing physical ports. So in this way you can configure all these things. And this is working as a layer two port channel here. I mean layer two interface. This port channel has been configured as a layer two. You know why? because it is configured here you see it is working as a trunk port and if it is not a layer 2 it means it cannot work as a trunk because if you configure this port channel as a layer 3 port channel it means that you will require to allocate an ip address right 
I will also teach you that how to configure layer 3 ether channel and how, how why do we require to configure layer 3 ether channel between switches right so I will also teach you that uh, what is the uses of layer 3 ether channel as well because it is also possible to configure yeah. layer 3 ether channel okay so in this way you can configure LACP now I, I think I should tell you like uh, you see show LACP system ID this is our own system ID this command will tell you that what is your own LACP system ID right so as you can see that by default priority is 32768 and uh, of course it is having base MAC address even if, if you want to check its base MAC address then you can say show button and uh, from here you can see its base MAC address like it is 00120133BE00 and here also you can read it like 00120133BE00 so both MAC addresses are same it means that LACP is using base MAC address for its system, system ID another command is show LACP internal detail so it will show you its own information so this is actually see A4 here active if you talk about the here active flags right S device is requesting slow BPDUs LACP DU it, it is not BPDU actually LACP BPDU it is LACP DU so you can see here that this is system ID right this is system ID it's our own system ID fine second thing port priority as I said it will be by default 32768 and because port ID is the combination of priority and port number C 1 by 0 by 21 right so even if you want to see your neighbor's information then also you can you can configure this command show LACP neighbor detail so it will show you complete information about your neighbor switch see this is neighbor partners information so partner in configured in passive mode as you can see as P, P is it means devices in passive mode this is system ID of neighbor switch and this is LACP port priority so now both of them I mean both switches are having each other's information is not it they have exchanged it, it, it uh, in the form of LACP DU is not it hello have you understood it now completely okay now the thing is like you must you must have this information or you must know that how to change LACP system ID and how to change LACP port ID as well right so first of all I will teach you that how to change your LACP system ID let's say this time I want to configure system priority here on switch one and the command will be LACP system priority right and can be configured in between 0 to 65535 by default it is 32768 let's say I configured it as 100 or 10 so it is not like STP like uh, you will require to change it in the increment of 4096 right here we do not have such rules <coughs> so now on switch one <coughs> you can see show LACP system ID and then you will see that of course you cannot change your base MAC address right but at least you can change your priority so this time you have changed your priority from uh, 3 to 7, 6, 8 to 10 and then after if you want to change any port priority as well LACP port priority then first of all you will require to move under interface mode interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 22 or 21 wherever you want to go right and then after you can change its port priority and to change its port priority command will be LACP port priority and then after can be configured in between 0 to 6 for 5 3 5 lower will always be preferred so you can configure like one here fine so if you configure its port priority as one now you see show LACP internal details so on 22 you will see that its port priority will be one you see on 22 only right however on 21 still it is having its port priority as 32768 <coughs> understood So in this way you can modify configuration of LACP. You can manipulate your LACP election in this way only. Fine.
so now your LACP is done your PACP done PACP is also done and now load balancing is also done it means ether channel is done the last thing that which is left in LACP is sorry the last thing which is left in ether channel is layer 3 ether channel right so let's go for layer 3 ether channel now so if you want to configure layer 3 ether channel here in between these two switches right the very first thing that you must remember that what is the major difference in between layer 2 ether channel and layer 3 ether channel right now you are having only and only layer 2 ether channel here available in between switch 1 and switch 2 that is why it is configured as a trunk port is not it this port channel is still working as a trunk port but the thing is like if you want to allocate an ip address on this port channel Yeah. Remember, remember port channels are not convertible ports you cannot convert them from layer 2 to layer 3 and also you cannot convert them from layer 3 to layer 2 like here by default it is working as a fine second thing why do we require to configure layer 3 ether channel between switches let's say this is switch 1 and this is switch 2 this is 21 and this is we have aggregated them if we have configured layer 2 ether channel between these two switches then after what can we do we can create one svi here and the SVI of same VDN and same subnet over here and then also these two switches can communicate with each other it's not it will not they form neighborship like ESGRP neighborship or OSPF neighborship tell me hey if you have configured VLAN 10 here and VLAN 10 here and then if you have allocated an IP addresses to these VLANs here on switch 1 as well as on switch 2 let's say that here you configure its ip address as 10.1.1.1 here and 10.1.1.2 here so will they not form the eigrp neighborship here of course they will form because they can they can communicate right because here you are having a trunk port available in between two switches right then what is the necessary i mean what why why is it necessary to have layer 3 ether channel between these two switches here see not for load balancing actually sometimes what happens that here you are not having layer 2 ports are you getting my point you do not have layer 2 ports let's say that these are only and only layer 3 21 as well as 22 both of them are layer 3 port available in between these two switches are you listen me carefully now right and if these two links are layer 3 links between these two switches right on each interface you will require to allocate an ip address right let's say you have a, you have allocated here uh, 10.1.1.1 and here you will require to allocate 10.1.2 so that they can communicate with each other right and here let's say that you have allocated 20.1.1.1 and here 20.1.1.2 you understand can't we allocate 10.1.3 on switch one here 10.1.3 no. No. no you know why because on a single Layer. device yeah you cannot allocate an ip address from the same subnet onto its multiple interfaces because each interface belongs to a separate broadcast domain and one subnet also belongs to one broadcast domain fine now if you are having three links it means you will require to have three different subnets if you are having four links available in between four rare three links available between these two switches it means you will require to have four different subnets, subnets. You, you will require to have four different subnets right and excuse me one second please oh, hello <coughs> all right so if you are having four layer three links available between these two switches then you will, you will require to have four different different subnets right and if you are configuring either ESERP or OSPF or BCP 
whatever it is how many neighbors will be there four, four. and in case if any one of the physical link goes down your neighborship if it comes up then again neighborship will come up and you know very well in case of bcp if your neighborship flaps if your neighborship comes up or goes down at that moment cp utilization will be too much very first problem is four different subnets second problem total number of neighborship will increase as per number of links third if any link comes up or goes down again number of neighborship will be changed and for that moment cpu utilization will be higher to solve this problem actually what can you do you can aggregate the, all of them you can bundle them in a single port channel you can bundle all these layer 3 switch ports in a single port channel so here you will be having port channel 1 you here you will also be having port channel 1 right let's say port channel you can figure port channel 1 on both ends then after you will require to allocate an ip address from only one subnet only on port channel right and if you configure any routing protocol now in in between these two devices there will be only one neighborship whether you configure eicrp or spf or bgp and also in case if any one of the physical link goes down or comes up there will not be any impact on your neighborship <coughs> so it will be an advantage of configuring layer 3 ether channel in between two switches have you understood it now yes sir fine so let's configure it now so before going to configure this uh, layer 3 ether channel here what will we do you see here show ether channel that by default it is showing you group state as layer 2 so uh, default interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and then you can then you have to say no interface port channel 1 and uh, I'll also configure same command on switch 2 as well and let's go let's move back again on switch 1 and you see show it the channel is there any show interface I mean show CDP neighbor as you can see that switch 2 is connected with 21 and 22 right then after I'm gonna to configure layer 3 ether channel before going to configure layer 3 ether channel we must be having layer 3 ports yes. layer 3 links in between these two switches right so interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 then you have to say switch port mod sorry no switch port once you will configure no switch port command under these two interfaces then these interfaces these two interfaces will come will become layer 3 right that is why here you see show inter uh, show interfaces trunk there is no trunk port right and if you say like show uh, show vlan brief command right if you configure this command then by default it shows you all all access ports right is it showing you 21 and 22 here no is it showing you 21 22 under trunk port no it means if those interface i mean if you found if you find that any interface is not coming in the output of show interfaces trunk as well as show in brief what does it mean layer three. it means that port is a yeah. layer 3 port or might be that your interface is member of any VLAN, but that VLAN is not existing on your switch. Yeah. That that can that can be another reason. Yeah. Have you got it now? Yeah. All right. So of course, like you, if you see, if you say, I mean, if you configure this command here, show interface fast Ethernet one by zero by twenty one and then switch port. What is it saying? Mm -hmm. In same manner, you will move on switch 2 and you will say interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and then you have to say <coughs> show interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 and then is disabled. Now configure your ether channel. You can use either mode on or LACP or PACP doesn't matter right so again I'm gonna to use uh, mode on now right so interface range fast ethernet 1 by 0 by 21 to 22 and then again I will say channel group one mode on in same manner I'll do configuration on switch 2 I will simply copy paste right so this time 
you see show ether channel group state must be and show interface is turned of course it must not listed under show interfaces uh, show interface turn command right and also it must not participate in stp as well is it participating no. and now you can do one thing interface port channel <coughs> is what one ip address is 12.1.1 you can allocate this ip address to this interface now because this time it is this port channel is not working as a layer 2 port this time it is working as a layer 3 port even you can also check it from here like show interface port channel is one and then switch port what is it saying because when we aggregated 21 and 22 at that moment those interfaces were working as a they were working as a layer 3 that is why port channel have also become as a layer 3 port <coughs> understood show ether channel see layer 3 show ether channel summary r u r means layer 3 and then after you can move on switch to an interface port channel is what one and then you can allocate an ip address to it as well 12.1.2 and then after if you say ip routing and then after you do one thing ecrp 100 not a summary fine do show history just copy and paste on switch one as well ecrp neighborship must come up but there will be only one neighborship right yes. show ip ecrp never via port what channel in case if any one of the physical long link goes down, there will not be any impact on your EICRP neighborship. Show me. I mean, no is there any impact. effect no. on your EICRP neighborship? Of course, no. So if you move on again, back. I mean, if you move back on this 21, and if you say no shutdown, of course, of course it will come up now. If it comes up, again, there will not be any impact on your existing neighborship. See, is there any problem now? So this is the advantage of configuring layer 3 port channel. And also it is breaking your broadcast domain. Because this time it is layer 3. It is working as a layer 3 port, right? Hello. Previously, your switches were in same broadcast domain because layer 2 port was available in between these two switches. But this time layer 3 port is there in between these two switches and layer 3 port it means it is it will separate your broadcast domain so if you are having any problem related to either layer 2 ether channel or layer 3 ether channel please let me know and one more thing here show ether channel load balance again it will be depending on you that what do you configure here right like I configured here source distance and IP and again you can confirm it like for an example if you want to set test okay test ether channel load balance interface port channel is what one and then IP and then source IP is let's say 10.1.1 and destination IP let's say 1.1.10 21 sorry 22 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 Fine. You can hold, uh, use all nine No. Oh. Sorry. I s earlier said that it will be depending on platform whether it supports or not. No, it, it's supporting. Of then course, you can, can use any one of them. <coughs> Remember, you cannot change your load balancing algorithm <coughs> per physical interface. No. You will be changing it for entire port channel and it will be applicable for all those interfaces which are the member of that port channel. channel. Fine. Okay. Then after it, we are also having one another feature of STP here for Ether channel, which is spanning tree, Ether channel, guard, misconfig. We can also enable this misconfiguration guard. However, it is by default enabled this misconfig guard is by default enabled in stp let me show you here i enabled it but you can move on switch to and let me show you here show spanning tree summary so ether channel misconfig guard must be did i config did i configure this no. switch to that's why i said that by default this feature is enabled. enabled now the question is that what is the uses of it see 
what happens that if you have done some misconfiguration related to ether channel right then stp can put your interfaces stp can put your trunk ports into error disabled state but remember it will work in case of layer to ether channels only it is not gonna to do work in case of layer 3 ether channel you know why because stp do not understand layer 3 ports right so if in case if you are going to configure if you are configuring layer 3 ether channel then definitely stp is not gonna to take any action against misconfiguration right but if you are going to configure layer 2 ether channel if you are configuring layer 2 ether channel and if you do some misconfiguration in ether channel then stp can put your interface into error disabled state sir what kind of mis misconfiguration as see some actually it depends on platform and ios version as well sometimes you will see that your stp will put your ether your links into error disabled state but sometimes they don't now you can ask me that which which kind of misconfiguration can happen right like for an example duplex is mismatching speed is mismatching right or like encapsulate trunk encapsulation protocol is mismatching right or trunk allowed list is mismatching right or like for an example um, you configured your ether channel on one end but you didn't configure it on another end right then also it will become misconfiguration and stp can put your interfaces into error <coughs> disabled state just to prevent your network from breezing loops you know what can happen let me discuss one what i mean uh, one question with you one scenario here let's say this is switch one and this is switch two right it was let's say this is zero by one zero by two zero by one and this is zero by two let's say its mac address is a its mac address is b so it's gonna to become root bridge so both of them will be dp dp here it will be rp zero by one right and it will be in blocking state. let's say that it is in blocking state right okay now what you did here you configured static ether channel here at the end of switch 2 only you didn't configure it on switch 1 but you have configured it on switch 2 i got a point mm -hmm. So because here it will see port channel and if you configure a static ether channel it does not care about the neighbor switch right it will not care about the neighbor switch whether it is configured or not configured it will configure itself and you will see that port channel will come up here and then after stp will be i mean i mean here now you can see that if we configure port channel here at the end of stage 2 then stp will be looking at port channel only now stp will not look at the physical interfaces right so stp will see or will think that okay there is only one link now right there is only one link avail available in between these two switches which is port channel one right so stp will put this port channel one into forwarding and once it will go it will move into forwarding state it means in in its background one and two are working right so both of them one and two both of them will move will also move into the forwarding state and if they comes into the forwarding state now because you understand now betterly what can happen for an example from this port channel you have transmitted one frame broadcasted frame towards switch one mm -hmm. so it can transmit a copy of that broadcasted frame back towards switch, switch two. two there will not be any problem if you configure port channel at the end of switch one right there will not <coughs> be any problem but if you configure port channel only on switch only on switch two then of course there can be a big problem there can be a breezing loop so you that is why we always says that before configuring port channel you must shut down your interfaces and then after configure your ether channel fine hello have you understood it now sure but our misconfiguration guard is enabled so how to misconfiguration guard will put your interfaces in error disabled state due to misconfiguration only not due to bridging loop we configure like uh, port channel on one side and another side there is no port channel so it is also a kind of mis misconfiguration of course it can put but if it does not put if it does not put your interfaces into error disabled state then of course there can be a because I have seen it, I have observed that sometimes it will put it like if you are working on 3550, then I have seen that uh, this misconfig guard will work. But on 3750, I have not seen it. Yeah. 
ये सी बिफोर कॉन्फ़िगरिंग पोर्ट चैनल बिफोर कॉन्फ़िगरिंग इथर चैनल एट द एंड ऑफ स्विच टू राइट इट वाज वर्किंग वर्किंग फाइन लाइक ही स्विच ऑन वाज रूट ब्रिज जीरो बाई वन एंड जीरो बाई टू बोथ ऑफ देम वर वर्किंग आई मीन दिस टू इंटरफेसिस वर कन्फिगर्ड एज ए डी पी हियर एट द एंड ऑफ स्विच वन एट द एंड ऑफ स्विच टू जीरो बाई वन वॉज कन्फिगर्ड एज ए आर पी जीरो बाई टू वॉज कन्फिगर्ड एज ए ब्लॉकिंग पोर्ट राइट दैन आफ्टर यू डिसाइडेड टू बंडल दैन यू कन्फिगर्ड स्टार्टिंग इधर चैनल हियर राइट सो इट इट क्रिएटेड पोर्ट चैनल सो नाउ एस टी पी कैन लुक एट पोर्ट चैनल ओनली राइट सो एस टी पी विल पुट दैट पोर्ट चैनल इन टू दी फोर्डिंग स्टेट बिकॉज इट विल थिंक दट देर इज ओनली वन लिंक अवेलेबल नाउ so in the background of this port channel now these two physical links are working right so these two physical links will move into the forwarding state automatically so if you have transmitted a frame from switch to switch to because switch to will transmit that frame based on load balancing algorithm right so let's say one frame has been transmitted from switch to towards switch 1 via 0 by 2 and it was broadcasted or multicasted so switch 1 will perform now flooding right and at that moment switch one can transmit a copy of that frame out from 0 by 1 so that this frame will come back to switch two now on this port is not it mm -hmm. and that is called bridging loop mm -hmm. that's the problem <coughs> so that can happen so this is all about the ether channel and i hope now you all of you are good with ether channel now so if someone ask you any question related to ether channel i think you can easily give a, yeah you can easily answer that right yes sir hmm pani ki bottle de dena piche do teen de do utha kar ke baad mein nahi kahega koi dekh aur le lo fine so this is if you think about the cdp you know very well that what is the uses of cdp by default the hello interval of cdp is 60 second our hold interval is what 180 seconds in same manner we are also having here lldp link layer discovery protocol right link layer discovery protocol and lldp is same as cdp the only difference between cdp and lldp is cdp is cisco proprietary and lldp is an open standard now the thing is that how can we enable this lldp because by default lldp is disabled like if you move on switch one and if you say show cdp never of course cdp is running here right and if you want to disable your cdp then you can say no cdp run and by using this command you can disable your cdp globally right so if you say show cdp never you it will show you that cdp is not enable so you have to say cdp run to enable it and then after you can say show cdp never and again it will start to show you your cdp i mean your neighbor devices right and cdp can provide you a lot of a lot of information i think i have already discussed it with you right one one more thing that if if you want to disable cdp per interface basis then also you can disable this cdp per interface basis as well right for an example show see show cdp never it can show you that 21 i mean it is having switch to connected on 21 as well as 22 just wait for a moment after some time i mean because you know cdp hello interval i mean cdp interval packet interval is what 60 seconds I will change your class time. Mix. I will make it 9:30 now. Because you people are not coming on time. Most of the students are coming late, like 10:15, 10:20, and that's not good. Because I am starting my class at sub 10:05. Right. So you can see now it has learned. छिप जा हाँ इंटरफेस पास इतना है वन बाय जीरो बाय ट्वेंटी वन और इफ यू वांट टू डिसेबल सीडीपी ऑन दिस इंटरफेस पर्टिकुलरली देन यू कैन से नो सीडीपी इनेबल शो सीडीपी इनेबल
Let me show you now. See, on switch, on 21, hold down timer. I've reduced. Then 120. Because after 120, it should have. See? Moved back on 180. Because after every 60 seconds, it will receive CDP packet. Fine. But it's, you can see it's this hold down timer uh, on its interface 21 is reducing, right? It means CDP has been disabled on this interface now. Less than 100 seconds now. You can also say clear CDP table. <coughs> Sorry. Show CDP neighbors. We have cleared this table now. So again, it will, it will take some time to create an entry. <coughs> but this time you will not be able to see anything on 21. <coughs> see. So if you are not able to see your neighbor devices, might be that CDP is disabled. <coughs> might be possible. To enable it again, say CDP. So in this way, you can disable or enable CDP under interfaces. Fine. Then after, you can also change your CDP interval like CDP timer, and then by default it is 60 seconds. You can make it like 30 seconds as well. CDP hold time by default 180 you can make it so in this way you can change parameters of CDP then after you must know about LLDP as well show LLDP neighbors what is it saying so to enable you have to say LLDP same as CDP run in same manner I'll move on switch to I'll, I'll say LLDP show LLDP never what of course only one. No, no, it's not. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I said, I, I thought that you are saying that uh, will CDP remain enabled? Yeah, of course. CDP and LLDP, both of them can work simultaneously. You see, show CDP neighbor. CDP is still working. It's not it. If you say show LLDP, it is also working. By default, and hold, hold down is 120, right? Add one more thing, show LLDP neighbors. Got it? Hello? Show LLDP interface fast Ethernet 1 by 0 by 21. right hello understood then after you can also say like interface fast ethernet 1 by 0 by this is the extra ordinary feature of LLDP as compared to CDP like if you enable or disable CDP per interface then you can you you completely turn on or turn off CDP on that interface right but here in case of LLDP you can also say LLDP transmit if I don't want to send LLDP packets out from this interface I can say no LLDP transmit but if I want to still receive LLDP packets on this interface then I can say LLDP so you can see your neighbor but your neighbor will not be able to see you <coughs> this is that how can you manipulate your LLDP configuration per interface basis Fine. So there are two entries now. 
and you can see show CDP neighbors as well so both of them are working simultaneously then after you can move on switch to you can say show LLDP neighbor only one entry is there on 21 we can't see anything here because of from there I restricted Trans transmission of LLDP packets on 21 only <coughs> If you want to change some parameters of LLDP timer at which rate LLDP packets are sent by default it is you can change it you can change it accordingly right then LLDP hold time by default 120 seconds you can change it from here So I hope that now you have understood. It is completely same as actually CDP. Okay. Even commands are also same like CDP run, LLDP run, CDP enable, LLDP enable. Here in place of CDP enable, we are having LLDP transmit and LLDP receive. So in this way, you can do configuration related to CDP and LLDP. So CDP and LLDP is also done now. Ether channel is done, VTP is done, interval and routing with using a router, I mean router in stick is done and uh, of course like trunking and all right. So next topic is going to be now STP, the spanning tree protocol. Fine. Very first question which occurs here in STP is why do we need to enable STP on switches? See. Let's say that I'm having a switch one and this is switch two. They are connected with using this zero by one here and they are zero by one on both side. <coughs> and uh, then you are having some lane users. Behind switch one as well as switch two. Is it really required? Is it really uh, mandatory to enable STP here in between these two switches? No. Of course, no. There is no need to implement STP here on these two switches because this time they do not have any redundant link. link. So STP will never require until right. So you understand very well that why do we require to enable STP on switches. So if you are not having any redundant link in your network then of course uh, there will not be any requirement of enabling STP. But remember it's not like that whether it is required or not STP is by default enabled. enabled. So it's not like that you will require to enable STP. Yeah on some of the vendors like HP and uh, some other vendors as well sometimes you will see that you will require to enable STP manually right. statically. But on all Cisco switches STP is by default enabled. So in case if you are having a redundant link, what can happen actually? Which kind of problem can occur here? Like there can be a breezing loop. And also your MAC table can become inconsistent. There would be too much, too much flooding of your data, right? There will be unnecessarily uh, bandwidth utilization due to Breezing loop, right? Now, do you know that how can a breezing loop occur if STP is not running here? Like for an example, if there is a host, if this host have generated any broadcasted frame, right? It means destination MAC address will be OLF, right? Mm -hmm. So this switch one will receive that frame here, and then switch one will transmit a copy of that frame out from each interface from here. As well as from here when switch 2 will receive it here it will also perform flooding <coughs> so we'll transmit it back in the direction of switch 1 when switch 2 received it on 0 by 2 then it will also transmit a copy of that frame back towards switch 1 so now one frame will move here in clockwise and one frame will also move in anti-clock direction is not it and that is called breezing loop. loop and if it is happening like that it means 
the MAC table of both switches will become inconsistent. MAC table of both switches will become inconsistent. And of course, because frame will, re will re always remain there and inside frame you do not have something like TTL. <coughs> do you have something like TTL? No. At layer 2 of OSI model? No. It means frame, frame will always remain there in your network and it will always be moving in your within your lane within your lane network fine so this is the problem if we do not configure a stp here in between these two switches with having one redundant lane so it is really mandatory for us to configure a stp on these two switches if they are having a redundant lane right now <coughs> if you are running here stp let's say you are running stp and uh, you are having a redundant link in between two switches like this is 0 by 1 this is 0 by 2 this is 0 by 1 and this is 0 by 2 right so in that case you know very well that uh, any one of the link will move into the Block. blocking state it it means that stp will always put alternate ports alternate links into blocking, blocking state, state to prevent your switched network from bridging loops right okay now before taking a step in into stp i must uh, i must uh, demonstrate flooding as well you must understand that what is the meaning by flooding on switches and how many types of flooding can be done by a switch or for how many types of frames switches can perform flooding do you understand i mean do you remember that for how many types of frames switch can perform flooding like unique unknown unicast what do you mean by a known unicast forget about it let me tell you in in short in very short if switch do not have destination MAC address of a unicasted frame in its MAC table, then it will always perform flooding. It will always perform. However, the frame was unicasted because the destination MAC address was a unicast MAC address, right? But due to that unicast MAC address was not available in the MAC in the MAC table inside the MAC table of a switch, right? So switch will always perform flooding because switch doesn't know that way to transmit this frame. Fine. So if switch do not have a frames destination unicast MAC address inside its MAC table, then switch will always perform unknown unicast flooding. Fine. And if switch receives a multicast frame, then also it will perform flooding. And if switch receives a broadcast frame, then also it will perform flooding. So switches can perform flooding for three types of frame. One unicast a non unicast sorry a non unicast second multicast and third one is what broadcast for all these three types of frames switches can perform flooding or switches will always perform flooding now what is the meaning by flooding flooding is a process in which switch will always transmit a copy of frame out from its each active port except that interface where it was received okay sometimes what happens that people will ask you that what is the difference between broadcasting and flooding so how will you explain it um, broadcast will generate always like end user and uh, flooding will perform the switch on uh, let me tell you see actually if you talk about the functionality of broadcasting and flooding is common actually right because the meaning by broadcasting is also same as like flooding like uh, if you are I mean if switch is performing broadcasting it means it will receive a frame on any interface and then after it will uh, transmit a copy of that frame out from each active port right mm -hmm. except that interface where it was received and the definition of flooding is also same as this broadcasting right but there is a major difference switch can flood unicast frame multicast frame as well as broadcast frame i mean switch will perform flooding 
flooding do not have any specific kind of destination MAC address, right? Like either it will be Unicast, or, I mean, it can be anything. Either it can be either Unicast MAC address, I mean, destination MAC address can be Unicast, can be multicast, or can be broadcast. But if we talk about the broadcasting, especially broadcasting, especially broadcasting, when we say like ARP will always be broadcasted, right? It means the destination MAC address will always be a broadcast address. <coughs> understood the difference between broadcasting and flooding in case of broadcasting frames will always be having their destination address as broadcast address हाँ हाँ कोई बात नहीं मुझे तेरी स्टेटमेंट की जरूरत नहीं है ओके तो मैं फ्लडिंग और ब्रॉडकास्टिंग की बात कर रहा था राइट आई मीन आई वाज डिस्कसिंग डिफरेंसेस इन बिटवीन ब्रॉडकास्टिंग एंड फ्लडिंग सो आई हॉप दैट नाउ वी हैव अंडरस्टूड द डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन फ्लडिंग एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग राइट सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अ ब्रॉडकास्ट फ्रेम इट मींस दिस इज अ मैक एड्रेस विल ऑलवेज बी ए broadcast address right but if you talk about flooding flooding can be can happen for any type of frame it can be unicasted frame it can be multicast frame as well as it can be broadcasted frame okay <coughs> and due to flooding only there can be a bridging loop right if switches do not perform i mean if if, if we say that okay switches will not perform flooding it means there they will never be a bridging loop due to flooding only there can be a bridging loop right if switches do not perform flooding, then then definitely there will not be any bridging loop. Okay. Then after, let's talk about this STP now. Do you understand that how bridging loop occurs? Like a step by step. Like when a switch port will receive a frame, will perform flooding. Next switch will perform, I mean will receive right that frame and again will perform flooding. Okay. Now, if we talk about functions of a switch, what's that? What are the functions of a switch? First one is address learning. And then second one is filter and forwarding decision. Third one is loop avoidance. So if we talk about the address learning procedure, so what does it mean that whenever a switch port, we are talking about the layer 2 ports, right? We are talking about the layer 2 ports. So very first function performed by a switch port is it will learn MAC address of a received frame first, right? Like in this way. Let's say this is a switch. This is a host actually. Its MAC address is A and this is 0 by 1. There is a host, another host its MAC address is B and let's say it is I mean it's like 0 by 2 right it is connected with 0 by 2 so whenever this host will generate a frame let's say source MAC address was and destination was B so switch 1 is going to receive this frame on its 0 by 1 after receiving this frame on its interface very first thing that will happen is it will learn its MAC address right source MAC address as well as destination MAC address. See, if you talk about a function of a router, I mean layer 3 port and the function function of a layer, layer 2 port, there will be a quite difference between these two interfaces. You know why? Because if a switch port, like on a switch, if a switch port receives a frame, it learns source and destination MAC address both of that frame. But if we talk about a layer 3 interface, it will learn it will read only and only destination ip address by default however we can also force a we can also force a layer 3 port to check to read its source address as well but by default routers do not learn source ip addresses of a received packet they will read they will read only and only destination ip address of a received packet and they will perform routing lookup inside their routing table for destination ip address only they don't care about the source ip address right 
but in case of switches switches what i mean whenever switches will receive any frame they will learn source mac address as well as destination mac address you know why if if they do not learn source mac address then how will it be possible for switch to form mac table to create mac table and if they do not learn destination mac address then how will it be possible to perform lookup inside the mac table oh my god i'm talking about a frame i'm not talking about the communication might be that they have already communicated so this pc was already having destination mac address inside its mac table <coughs> let's say this frame has been generated by this host here so let's assume that <coughs> the source mac address of that frame was a and the mac address was b this frame has received on switch one zero by one now very first thing will be performed by switch one is it will learn the mac address the source mac address as well as destination mac address after learning source mac address it will build its mac table that there is a device which is connected to this port and its mac address is what okay. it might be it is already having this entry inside its mac table might be the switch one was already having this entry right so if it was having this entry already in its mac table then it will refresh it because you know very well that by default mac address aging time is what 300 seconds so what does it mean that if it does not learn the mac address of each received frame it means after 300 seconds it will flush those entries that is why i said that whenever a switch port will receive a frame it will always learn its source mac address as well as destination mac address fine so when switch one open this frame it came to know that the source mac address of this frame was a it means a device is connected up to this interface and the device is having its source its mac address as a it will create this entry inside its mac table right and then and then it will also learn its destination mac address right and for its destination mac address now it will look up its mac table its scam table yes. now there will be two things either it will be having destination mac address inside its mac table or it will not be having if it is having destination mac address then it will transmit that frame out from that appropriate interface right mm -hmm. but let's say that it is not having destination mac address available inside its mac table now so in that case it will perform flooding so if it performs flooding then finally a copy of that frame will be transmitted towards this host it will receive it it will accept it right and then after it will also reply with some kind of data right so if it replies back in that case source mac address will be and destination will be a so whenever this switch one will receive this frame on 0 by 2 this time source mac address is b so it will create an entry immediately inside its mac table that there is a device which is connected by 0 by 2 and its mac address is what b and this time again it will perform lookup in its mac table for destination mac address and destination mac address was a so it will perform unicasting so it will transmit that frame out from this interface so this is called address learning and filter and forwarding decision very first step was address learning and then after learning mac addresses it will perform lookup its in its mac table that is called filter and forwarding decision because it, if it forms if it if it found destination mac address available inside its mac table then it will perform unicasting if it does not found destination mac address available inside its own mac table then it will always perform flooding so this is called filter and forwarding decision finally it is loop avoidance for loop avoidance switches will be using stp or you can say stp will be by default enabled on all on, on cisco switches on all cisco switches to prevent switched network from bridging loops so i have uh, switch one like uh, build a cam a map table for uh, some ports and and uh, she is doing like uh, unknown universe study. So mm -hmm. it will send that uh, that frame from uh, uh, which ports are not having the. Of course. Of course. Okay. It will. The meaning by flooding is same. Might be it was broadcasting. It was broadcasted frame, right? Might be it was <coughs> multicasted frame. Yeah, 